Hello, dear subscribers. Most watch me without a subscription. Support my channel with a subscription. Thank you. Story 1. Ope cheated on his wife. While she was dealing with the postpartum depression, he made worse. I know I'm a POS, and I don't deserve my wife and our two beautiful sons, four and two. I know that by telling her this will be the end of our marriage. She will not forgive me. There will be no talking through it. She will tell me to pack my bags and leave immediately. I can't live with the guilt of not telling her, but I can't live without her. I don't know what to do. Basically, my wife and I always wanted a traditional family. I would go to work, and she would stay home with the kids. We both always wanted a large family, a house in the suburbs, a dog, the whole thing. We got married when she was 19, and I was 23. She got pregnant right away, and our first son was born nine months to the day after our wedding. He was such an easy, happy baby. We were all so happy. My wife was super passionate about cooking, arts and crafts, and home decor. Our home was always spotless, despite having a baby and dog. We had a great marriage and a healthy sex life. We were both naive enough to think that being parents was always going to be easy. We started trying for another as soon as the doctor cleared us. It took about eight months for her to get pregnant, which stressed her out a lot because she got pregnant so easily with our first. This pregnancy was different. She had no energy. She gained a lot of weight and was unrecognizable. With our first son, she only had a small bump and you wouldn't have even known she was pregnant if you saw her from behind or if she was wearing an oversized shirt. With this pregnancy, she blew up like a balloon. Her face and feet were swollen. I sound like an asshole for saying this, but she looked like a monster. We didn't have sex for the entire pregnancy. Sometimes she would try to initiate but I always turned her down because I was repulsed by her. She had a difficult birth and our son was born with some health issues, relatively minor, thankfully, but enough to give us a scare. My wife blamed herself for our son's health issues. In the heat of the moment I told her that if she had been more active during pregnancy, then our son probably would have been fine. She just kept sinking further and further into depression. She stopped brushing her hair and it started to mat. I would come home from work at 5 p.m. to find our older son still in his pajamas. The dirty dishes were piled a mile high in the sink. She stopped showering regularly and she refused to go on a jog to lose the baby weight, even though I tried to encourage her by saying I'd cook dinner if she did. Our son's physical needs were being met but emotionally she was checked out. I started fantasizing about being single and not having a wife or kids. I started going to the gym and the bar after work instead of going home to them. I met Cassidy, 19F, at the gym and we really hit it off. She was vocal about never wanting kids and when I would complain about my wife to her, she would pile on too. I was happy at the time because I wanted someone to validate me for being such an asshole, but looking back I'm disgusted. Pretty soon Cassidy and I were dating, and I was having a whole separate life behind my wife's back. After a few months, my wife slowly started to return to her old self. She started taking more pride in her appearance and started cooking from scratch again instead of ordering takeout or frozen food. Our home was clean again, and our younger son's health issues were improving. I fell in love with her all over again. I started to realize that Cassidy wasn't as exciting and interesting as I thought she was. She was actually quite dull and stupid, and had no real opinions or interests outside of partying and TikTok. I started to suspect that she didn't actually like me either, and was just flattered by the attention of a married man and I stupidly enabled it by making her feel special and better than my wife. I ended things with her a few months later, and she didn't even seem to care. All in, I was cheating on my wife for just over a year. My wife has recently started asking to try for a third baby, and the guilt all just hit me at once. I feel paralyzed. I have nightmares that she finds out from someone else.
I've stopped eating and sleeping. I'm starting to get aches and pains from the stress. I don't know what to do. I know I'm an asshole. I know I don't deserve her. But I don't know how to tell her without breaking her. She's amazing, and she never deserved this. Update. I really didn't expect the last post to blow up so much and even reach TikTok. I'm just going to post an update, and then I'll probably delete this account. As per somebody's advice, I took the day off work, dropped our two sons off at their grandparents' house, and sat my wife down. I came fully clean. I made no excuses, told her I didn't expect forgiveness, and that she had every right to say or do whatever she wanted. She didn't respond for a while, but then very softly and quietly told me that she wanted me out of the house the next day and that we were done. She didn't scream or cry or show any emotion. I asked her if she wanted to say anything else and she said no. I told her I was sorry and she said she didn't want to hear it. We sat in silence for what felt like forever while she stared blankly into space. When our sons came home, seeing how expertly she was able to put on a brave face and not let them know anything was wrong broke my heart. It hit me like a ton of bricks that she was used to doing this and it was all my fault. I slept in the guest room that night but didn't get much sleep. The next morning, our older son asked me why mommy was crying again last night and said he wanted to cheer her up. My wife refuses to speak to me, look at me or acknowledge me in any way. I heard her on the phone to her best friend who lives in another country. She told her that she thought she had found a good one and that she was going to break the mold. Her grandfather walked out and left her grandma with nothing. Her dad walked out and left her mom with nothing. I'm a piece of shit, just like every other man in her life. I left today and she didn't even look at me or say anything. She just continued watching TV and crocheting as if nothing was happening. I'm staying at my parents' house and they are disgusted with me. My mom cried when I told her. They love my wife like their own daughter. I let everybody down. I deserve everything coming my way. Test story two. AIT for not defending my friend when his expensive new clothes got ruined. I, 23F, live in India and had a friend, 24 meters, let's call him Joe, visiting from New York this week. Today was Holi, which is a massive festival in India, where people douse each other in color and water to celebrate. It's also fairly accepted that anyone is fair game on Holi, whether you're throwing water balloons from your balcony or chucking color from the street. People douse random strangers and everyone enjoys it. Joe had another friend living in my city who invited him and me on Holi to show Joe a proper Holi celebration. We both got ready in the morning. I was wearing an old night suit, and Joe had dressed up in a newly bought very expensive looking curter. He gave me a very judgmental look and asked whether it was appropriate for me to go to his friend's party dressed in old ragged clothes, especially when his friend had said it would be a proper party. I laughed and explained that not only were we going for a holy party, but we would also have to walk on foot to reach the friend's house and whatever clothes we were wearing were bound to get ruined. Joe still looked a bit annoyed, but didn't say anything further. Cut to 20 minutes later and we got out of the car and began the short five minute walk to Joe's friend's house. A bunch of teenagers ambushed us out of nowhere and within seconds we looked like walking rainbows and were utterly drenched. I laughed, picked up some of the kids' water balloons and chucked them at them, but Joe got incredibly mad and started screaming at the kids about how expensive his clothes were, how they ruined it, and how they had reimbursed him. The kids could see he was angry, but said to me in Hindi they couldn't understand what he was saying. I told Joe that, and then also told him that I had forewarned him about this, and it's a very, very accepted part of the culture here, something people do not get upset about. Joe got mad at me and told me to explain to the kids that they had to apologize and cough up the money for his clothes. I refused and Joe walked off in a huff. The party went great. It was a typical holy bash in Joe, and I immediately fit in being already covered in water and color, and I thought all was fine now. However, when we got back to my house, 
Joe got really mad at me about refusing to defend him, making him feel isolated and alone in a foreign country, and imposing my culture in an uncomfortable manner without respecting the fact that he's a tourist. I told him he was being unreasonable and went to bed. However, later a few of our mutual also American friends texted me that I was being an ah about the situation. I did not think I had done anything wrong, but now I'm starting to suspect that I was an ah for not understanding and respecting that my friend might not be comfortable with such traditions and that he had spent a lot on these new Indian clothes. Update. So it turns out there was a lot more to the story, quite a lot more. I kicked Joe out of my house today. He will never be part of my or my friend's life ever again. I made a group with everyone besides Joe, and as soon as I started texting them, it was clear Joe had fed them utter nonsense. He told them that I had pressured him into going shopping, telling him that wearing ethnic clothes was a necessity, and not only had I taken him to very high-end brands, I had pushed him to buy the most expensive items. I immediately clarified the situation to my friends, and that's when a much darker truth began to emerge. We are a group of about 10 friends who met at university in the States and are a very diverse group, Indians, Brazilians, Chinese, Nigerian, Spanish, American, etc. We also became friends over a shared love of traveling and committed to visiting each other's home countries after graduation. Post-graduation, we were fortunate enough to all land really high paying jobs and travel was the hobby we chose to use our surplus income on. The difference was Joe and Cameron who had let's just say very extensive trust funds waiting for them. So while we all traveled quite a bit, it was Joe in particular who traveled the most. In fact, he has already visited most of our friends. I was the second last left. Turns out his actions were a pattern. He takes some aspect of a culture acts on it and then throws a scene about other aspects he doesn't like gets red envelopes for Chinese New Year as a fit about a fire phobia while lighting lanterns, goes to Brazil for carnival, throws a fit about being asked to dress accordingly, etc. None of us had mentioned this before to each other because the general perception had been that Joe was a good guy, well-traveled it's it, and that it was just a one-off incident. The worst part though, this only happened with his friends of color. No issue when he went for La Tomatina or Oktoberfest. I decided to confront Joe today morning, and at first he denied, but I showed up the group messages. That is when he lost it. He went on a rant about how all non-white culture was amusing and exotic, and he didn't mind it, but he hated how we always forced him into barbaric and disgusting parts of our tradition. He said that he had an issue with, and that we were killing his love for travel and how much better our friends in Europe had been. I told him to get out of the house instantly, and when he refused, saying he had nowhere to stay, I had my driver take his luggage out. I told the rest of the group about this, and we are all equally shocked and hurt, and are cutting him off entirely. Thank you for watching, dear subscribers.